Now, this is a, this is off to a rough start. All right, so we got here. Oh, this is it. <laughs> We're back in the kitchen here. Here's your grandiose introduction. Are you ready for this? I should Google your bio. Yeah. Megan Gillis. Megan. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. What's in my bio right now? Are you? Uh, You're calling it it's street rags. Are you mostly on Instagram or Facebook? You link them together? Mostly on Instagram. Um, that's been, yeah, that's been more fun doing videos and, and stuff like that. And then otherwise, when you're not quarantined, you're in Washington. Where are you? Yep. I'm in Spokane. I play with the orchestra there. Um, yeah. And I have a studio apartment filled with two xylophones and a set of timpani. And I make it work there, just playing tunes and, um, and that that's about all I do there. <laughs> People are gonna, are so, gonna get yeah. hate mail, like like um, you know the, the 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 abortion people. Both sides will get send me all the hate mail if if I don't ask you the following question, which is, <laughs> what xylophones and timpani do you have in your apartment? <laughs> oh right, right, right. Gear, 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 gear. Yeah, man. Important. Okay. <laughs> um, I have. Uh, Deegan 872 that I found from a lady in Peoria, Illinois, who bought her house and it came with a xylophone. And then um, I have I have a Deegan 830, the fold up lightweight guy um, from Olympus Olympic Drums and Percussion in Portland. Um, very nice shop. And then um, a Keylon that I bought from a guy in Pittsburgh with very few teeth. Um, that was very cheap, and I think it's a Ross, which is like a um, kind of Walmart brand Mosser, I guess. Uh, no offense to Ross, <laughs> he still makes equipment. <laughs> Incidentally, Ross is no longer uh, but, making uh, instruments. You know, it's made a lot of money for me, so. Right, exactly. That's what the... <laughs> Um, and that's the one that you were toting around on the, on the, either subway yeah. or, or in the parks and all that. Yeah. Well, I used to steal a xylophone from the Cleveland Institute that was a Keylon Musser. It was a piece of trash, um, that's still there. And I broke it. Um, I broke one of the legs, but, uh, yeah, that, that was the first one. And then I bought one. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's how it all started. What did you start with? You had a little two octave, two and a half octave instrument. I think I had three. <laughs> I had three. Uh, I same. Oh, same, okay. I think we have the same story. I I borrowed uh, a Jenko from Queens College. Okay. That um, and uh, then I got the quit the same instrument. Actually, it was a Jenko. Slingerland Jenko, you know, Slingerland is Jenko. Uh, and then I got a uh, okay. resonators from a, an 830 or a whatever, 834 or one of those things, uh, which, and then I used the Jenko bars on that. And I just loved that I could, okay. I could just throw it in a suitcase and kind of wrap it with the costumes. And because, yeah. And I was in shape then because we lived on 23rd street which was like up a hill so i dragged all my stuff up so i had like a really strong right arm <laughs> so you have a sponsorship with ross that's great uh <laughs> yeah they love me um yeah it's held up really well and it's like the bars don't come off so that's easy um no complaints uh the sound is not great but no key line sounds great but yeah, but people admire, you know, uh, 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 people know what it is to play that instrument and the fact that you can make it sound good and uh, is, uh, if, if you've tried to play one, it's like, oh my goodness, you know, uh, <laughs> people will appreciate that, I think, the players. Sure. And, uh, and if sure. people don't know the difference, it doesn't matter. Uh, so right. no one's like, oh. I yeah. couldn't help but notice you didn't have an 872 as a refurbished by a <laughs> I met 
Okay, this is a crazy story. I met a thruple in Provincetown, Massachusetts last summer, and they, um, one of the members of the thruple was neighbors with, I forget her name, but she was like, she went on tour with, um, oh God, now I'm going to forget all these people. Um, she went on a tour with some major radio program, but she had like a Deegan radio special and they had it in their house. It was like they inherited it or something, but he actually like knew the stuff, but you know, that's one person. Right. Um, Tell us, how did you get involved with music? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I started on clarinet. I did that for three years, switched to drums because my friend did it and I wanted to hang out with her, I guess. And then um, I suppose I, I got addicted and now um, one stopped me. So here I am making money doing it. <laughs> oh, and then what was your first exposure to uh, xylophone music? Um, I think in freshman year of college, I think somebody was learning the whistler and I thought it was cool. Um, but I mean, I just started <laughs> the busking thing I did in grad school because there was a drag queen that was doing a show in New York and I wanted to go see it, but I was broke. I was like, well, if I took a xylophone, maybe I could busk, make money and then it worked. And then I learned a lot of tunes. Uh, the late Richard Winner, I think liked that I was doing it. I never mentioned it to my <laughs> primary teacher, Paul Jancic. I think he knew. And then Mark Jamalakis was impressed by my second recital when I played a bunch of stuff. So I guess it's, uh, I guess it's universally approved. Well, or I don't know, tolerated. Do you consider yourself a timpanist or a percussionist or a flute player or what do you? <laughs> I primarily play timpani. Um, that is my day job goal. I love playing the xylophone, but, um, I don't anticipate a uh, uh, sudden blast into superstardom, but um, I don't know. I'll have fun. You got a lot of likes. <laughs> yeah, just racking them up one at a time. Um, no, I have fun with it. My parents like it, um, so I'll keep doing that. And um, that's a lot harder. You gotta like learn a lot of notes and record yourself and play live shows and get people to come to the live shows. Do you, you make all your... In orchestra, I just show up. You make all your accompaniment tracks? Oh yeah, on the computer. You, what do you, how do you do that? Sibelius? Or? Yeah, just in the computer, in Ableton Live. Oh. Um, just Ableton, I like, yeah. Um, I, I just was working on working on Dizzy Fingers right now, I think. I, so I'm learning three new ones because I, I found a collection of things that I took from Mr. Wiener. And it was Dizzy Fingers, Chopsticks, Fiddle Faddle, and Comedian's Gallop. And then, so like I did, I think I did most of the thingies. And then I'll change the note lengths and then, but that's, let's see. Grand piano and grand piano, left hand, right hand. And there's some stuff down there where I type it in. And eventually it'll go in this long form thing where all the A, B, C parts will go in. And then it becomes, and there's the track list. So there's many versions because I don't always get the right tempo or, anyways. That's what I got. Sorry, that was just a whole bunch of hieroglyphics to me. You, when you say you enter them, you play them on a keyboard ah. or you're like E flat, E flat, E flat, or what do you, how do you enter that stuff? <laughs> it is very much like, yeah, it's the equivalent of typing with one finger. It's just one note at a time and a lot of copy paste. We'll do another, uh, another, because thankfully, ragtime is mostly just three chords. <laughs> okay. That could be hours, I fear. <laughs> okay. Are you busking every day on the internet? I don't know. Maybe I'll go live, yeah, once a week to play new things.
But in the meantime, people, you know, it's all new to us. Uh, um, Fair. What, uh, you want to play something? Sure. Um, got any preferences? What you're doing is very funny to me because if somebody put me on the spot and was like, play something, I would play like the thing that I've played a thousand times. And you're like, well, I'm in the middle of this. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I yeah two uh um all right I'll do one that I maybe know. That's is that something? Oh oh yeah that's warm almost for us yeah um. <laughs> Um, yeah, usually I finish those in, in busking and it's just silence. Yeah, total silence. Illusion. I'd say there's a, I've noticed, I, when I, I came out and saw you at like Union Square and you were like looking down the whole time and I was like, well, geez, how's she going to make any money? Um, <laughs> now, like I, I watch you online and it's like, you're going to just stare at the camera. Is that something? Oh, Oh, yeah, I realized that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I look so unhappy when people take videos of me. I was like, oh, God, stop it. <laughs> um, it's so funny when, yeah, people get so intense. I used to take things so seriously. It's just that it's, it's such a stupid dichotomy, like playing the happiest music in the world and looking like you would rather be um, anywhere else. <laughs> that was great. Your triplet variation there. Can you talk us through a little bit uh, for the for the novice um, uh, of because you you kind of have your own version of that tune now, right? Sure. Yeah. What well, we did, we recorded an EP uh, early 2017, I guess, of triplets, cross corners, rainbow ripples. Dottie Dimples and Jovial Jasper, and what we what we did was for every one of those, like everybody's done recordings of them. So we were like, how do we make these? Di this was with Bone Strokes. We were like, how do we make these different? And so with triplets, we did it with um, washboard and the typical stuff, but we did trades with xylophone and washboard in the B section. So we like double the number of times that a normal person would play that. So I just kept that because sometimes. These tunes are like two minutes long and um, you just want them to go on a little bit more so people pay you more money. Um, so to keep that and then going back to the beginning at the end is classic ragtime and some other things we did with the EP are like in Cross Corners we made it like Tommy Igo's Groove Essentials where every section was just an, a weird um, groove uh, not typically found in ragtime. Um, for Jovial Jasper we did what you do which is speed up the trio we do it a lot faster, I think. And we did trades in the stop parts. And with Dottie Dimples, we, <laughs> we put a backbeat on the end and um, made it very uh, 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 like rock and roll, I guess, is what the kids call it. And uh, with Rainbow Ripples, we did a, like, a, uh, like a stripper style ending, like really slow swing. It's like, Big Bandy, I guess. Um, yeah, that was fun. Can I pick on you to play that? Uh, your triplet variation was like very smooth, but when you said, oh, I'll just blow triplets through this whole strain. Can you just talk us through that? How, what are you doing? Yeah, um, I will go play the instrument. I'm setting this on a suitcase. You don't need a ring light and a tripod, friends. <laughs> I do triplets. A lot of the times I break them into fours because right, left, right, left. And that's the easiest cheater to addition. Um, but, you know, what's an easy way of like doing a riff on a song called Triplets is just playing the triplet rhythm in whatever for that whole uh, second A section. 
I don't even remember how the whole regular section goes, so a lot of <laughs> it's improvised, but you start with, you know, the first part, um, and then you just keep going with triplets. And, you know, I basically, you can use a little bit of, I'm bad at keeping track of harmonies, but I mean, you use the basic rag scale, which would be, you know, plus uh, flat three, flat seven. Um, and you could just go up and down. <laughs> Uh, until the triplets end. And then eventually the piano will tell you it's time to stop now. It's time to do this part. Is it? Is it? See, now I know what it is. It's that transition bit. The C7. Um, yeah. There comes Noli again. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That, that's, that's great. Okay, I'm going to take some Facebook questions here for the good people. Because they're gonna, I'm gonna get that hate mail if I don't. Oh, oh, this is a good one. A Megan Gillis question if I've ever seen one. <laughs> this is from Kevin. My question, he says, what does the future of xylophone playing look like? Uh, I love rags and see the importance of them, but what potential is there for it as a non-rag solo instrument? Thank you, Kevin B. Well, um, Gautier tried to do that one song with xylophone. And uh, that worked, but who knows about them anymore? Um, people love the mallet station now. I don't know what kind of uh, instrument that counts as. I think um, there's a guy who, who does a lot of, um, he does a lot of this. Uh, dance music. I guess that's xylophone too. And um, I don't know. Uh, Postmodern jukebox is popular, so um, maybe they'll have a a mallet player. Um, could be you. Could be you. But it could be me. Um, it could be you. It could be uh, uh, somebody else. Um, <laughs> would you, wait, is that something you would like to do? Oh, sure. I'll go play some stuff um, in pop songs. Yeah, that'd be fun. I just like playing with people, and I don't play with that many people other than in orchestras nowadays, so. Question from Sean. What are some of the things you studied, or some of the things you learned from your studies in timpani that translated to xylophone playing? Ooh. Nothing. <laughs> um. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I I personally think it's absurd. I don't know that I'm outspoken about this, but uh, that there's this like one size fits all for like, oh, here's how you play the snare drum, and that's how you're gonna play the timpani, that's how you gonna play the so They're different instruments. Oh. They, yeah, and I slam, I slam so hard. Well, especially because now I'm playing with five sticks. I have like three options, and they're all bad for practicing here. Um, if I slam on the instrument when I'm playing, especially improvising, I would never do that on timpani. Um, timpani is so much easier if you compare ragtime to that. All you got to do is play in tune. You got to play in tune and in time, and you got to have your hands even. And you mostly play like one note at a time, whereas this, like, um, you think of like big images of patterns in your head and you're going, you know, 60 miles an hour down, down one way or the other, hmm. um, playing, you know, six notes a second or whatever. Okay, this is one that Cody made it, I think. For the folks at home who might not know bone bone chugs, 
bones, jug, jugs, and harmony. Now they're, what do they go by now? Bones, jugs. Bones, jugs. I don't know if it was, I think I wanted it to be bones, jugs, but I think, I think people understand the pun in bones, jugs, and harmony more than I expected. All right. <laughs> So they're in, um, in, in Illinois, yeah. yeah. They are indeed. And how? And you got involved with them when? Uh, 2015. I was playing in New York, and then I went on tour with them for a couple of years, and we made two albums, and um, and now they're doing tons of other stuff too. Hey, but you're not you're not playing with them now because you're in. At the moment, yeah. Awesome. But you, but you're you're still a uh, a spirit animal in the project. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, and so tell us a little bit about them because people they're not actually as famous as we think. <laughs> um, they it's uh it's a jug band, it's a uh, banjo, guitar, uh, upright bass, a drum, whole assortment of trap kit, drum stuff, jug, obviously, and xylophone. And they played like bluegrass, they played early jazz, they played um, uh, ragtime stuff, they played um, all the stuff. And we just went around in the Midwest and played uh, bars and sometimes clubs and made a living. So that was fun. Uh, here's one from Nick McConaughey. Megan is awesome! Wow. Thanks, Nick. Uh, what practice methods have you used, have had students use to keep the proper xylophone technique and issues like keeping hands low, proper use of wrist or even fingers, etc.? Thanks, Megan. Wow. Um... I <laughs> I am a not a good person to talk about technique. Uh, I am I think I think a lot about this. I think everything. Well, you probably disagree, but I think everything is connected. And I spent a lot of time growing up playing sports and not music. And my um, muscles, I think, have like good luck in that like. You know, I learned my technique by going out to New York and playing for eight hours a day for a couple of days at a time. And then I figured out how to minimize my like energy use in playing fast, as opposed to like how people get injured, which is do exactly that. But, <laughs> but I don't know, I have bad luck, I guess, or genes or something. Um, but I learned how to play low by like, tiring myself out to the point where I had no other choice right. um and the same thing goes for learning songs like I gave myself a month to learn eight rags I did that and then I you know pushed myself to learn a rag a day or whatever for um the time since then which I guess I started in 2013 and now I'm at probably near 50 rags learned I don't know something like that you say you learn a rag a day. How do you go about? What, are you learning the chord structure first? Are you learning? There's not, not. It's not very melodic music. Are you learning? You know, notes. What are you learning? Uh, usually, I mean, yeah, because I came from it from an orchestral perspective. I was just like, these are the notes, and I played the notes. <laughs> so I learned all the rags note by note. Um, and then I started improvising with Jovial Jasper because it was slow and I could like figure out, I knew it was like one five were the chords. And I was like, okay, just figure out how to improvise then. And then I started doing it with all the C major rags and then started figuring out like C minor and the other ones that had different keys. Um, but yeah, it's definitely note by note.
Yeah. There's no trick that I can give anybody. And there's no trick that anyone can give anybody to not suck. Like, you're just going to suck until you don't. That's okay. <laughs> like, right. everybody, everybody sucks when they start. I mean, I've never, I mean, even Mozart, like, everybody uses, like, one genius person as some um, semblance of, like, existence of talent. But that's not, that's nothing. Awesome. I think we covered one way or another the questions. And, oh, Mio has a question. Yeah, she does. Have these dials on the subway station? Hey, how do you move that xylophone around? Um, well, I learned the hard way. I took it upstairs and downstairs and bruised my entire body. And then I found out that there were elevators in the subway. So then, <laughs> um, so then I just go to stations with elevators now. We'll wrap it up. I'll uh, try to make some sense out of this. And uh, it's great. great. Thank you.